Welcome, I'm Doug. And I'm Alex. Welcome to DCAC Going Green News, Episode 6. Please subscribe below and click on the like button if you find this one interesting. This video is being uploaded on February 23rd, 2020. That's great. This week we want to start with some great news from our own area. The city of Portland has started to use a new electric generating system. They have installed four hydro generators in the city's drinking water pipe system. It consists of four 42 inch turbines that create electricity as the water flows through them. Each will produce 1,100 megawatt hours of electricity per year, enough to power over 150 homes. That's a lot of homes. Yeah, it's a pretty good amount. A lot of homes. That will produce two million US dollars in free energy over 20 years. And since the city's water system is 100% gravity fed, there is no power used to operate the system. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The system is designed by Lucid Energy here in Portland. So. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a homegrown system. They have systems planned for more cities around the world, including Riverside, California, and Johannesburg, South Africa. Any city anywhere in the world that has a gravity-fed system can use this kind of generation. Including a lot of places. A lot of places. If your water source like ours mm -hmm. is up in the mountains and it's all flowing downhill, then it's really easy to put one of these pipes in. Mm -hmm. In other environmental news, this is on a related story from a couple of weeks ago that mm -hmm. we did. A new plastic patch was recently located 15 miles off the Caribbean island of Rotan. Mm -hmm. Another one. Yep. And the patch is larger than the island itself. Yeah, the island is known for its pristine water by divers worldwide. Photographer Caroline Power, who has a home there, said, We were on a dive trip to a set of islands that don't quite break the ocean surface. They are one of the most pristine dive sites in this part of the Caribbean. Everywhere we looked, plastic bags of all shapes and sizes, chip bags, Ziplocs, grocery, trash, snack bags, and other packaging. Some were whole and the rest were just pieces, she said. That is crazy. It's crazy. In some areas, the patch was over five miles wide. And as far as the eye can see, from horizon to horizon, so they couldn't even really measure how long it was, but it was over five miles wide. Um... Yeah. They think the trash is coming from the Mapatogu River in Guatemala. Man, we as the people of the earth must do everything we can to stop this plastic pollution. I mean, well, it is ruining pristine places in the world that don't produce any trash. Well, you said it's coming from a river, right? Yeah, it's coming from a river, so... And so, I bet you, I'd bet you anything that the, um people at the um, ocean cleanup people are going to yep. be targeting that river here i really soon. hope so it's definitely one they should put on their uh their uh, radar for because mm -hmm. man we got to do something so hey one thing we can all do is contact your state and local representatives to put laws in place to curb the use of single-use plastics because 99 percent of the plastic out there is from single-use plastics just like asking your government if they could do what happened in here in oregon with the um single-use plastic bag ban. Yeah, for uh, yeah, anything we can do. And, you know, the UN's got to get involved and the EU and all these countries because, mm -hmm. you know, a place like Guatemala doesn't have a lot of money and they are no. a poor country and they're having all kinds of problems down there. But still, we need to stop this, you know, polluting the ocean so bad that people can't even go dive mm -hmm. in what should be the most pristine and beautiful places on the planet. Yeah. So let's get out there and do what we can. Mm -hmm. So now for a new, more positive note. Yes. We just learned that the Swedish furniture company, IKEA. Yes, home of the fold down, you build it furniture. DIY. Yes, definitely DIY. Has been using mushroom, yes, mushroom based packaging that will decompose in your garden or front yard in a few weeks. Yep. According to research at Harvard University, it takes polystyrene packaging which is most of the packaging in the in the world mm -hmm. 1000 years 1000 1000 1000 not 100 not 100 1000 why are we using something that takes a thousand years to decompose i mean we haven't even been making polystyrene for a thousand years no we have not that's crazy 
Maybe not even for a hundred years, which is crazy. No, not, probably not. And it also causes major damage to all for all forms of wildlife. That's insane. Yeah. They have estimated that if we don't stop using plastic by 2040, or at least recyclable plastic, that 99%, not 90, 99% of all birds on the planet will have some form of this plastic in their gut. Yeah, it's because the birds think it's something to eat and they eat it because mm -hmm. it looks like it could be edible. Mm -hmm. And they're cutting birds up all over the world that are dying and they're finding them full of plastic. So once again, folks, if you're gonna get something that's packaged like that, please, please, please make sure it gets put into the waste stream correctly. And companies out there, just stop making the stuff. Yeah. IKEA will be using its biodegradable mycelium fungi package for many of its products. It is produced by Ecovation, a U.S. company in Troy, New York, mm -hmm. by allowing the mycelium... Which is the, um, if, for those of you guys who don't know, the mushroom is just the, um, fruit. The mushroom at the top is just the fruit, and then there are a bunch of root things that are the mushroom, or the roots of the mushroom going down throughout the ground, which are called mycelium. That's the mycelium. So, like, if you roll over a log that had mushrooms on it, you'll sometimes find white stuff under it. Right, that's, that's mycelium. That's mycelium. So what they're doing is they're growing it on clean agricultural waste, such as corn stalks. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. So it's another waste stream that's getting taken out. Okay, the fungus fibers are then dried and formed into the shapes that the company needs. Uh -huh. Joanna Yarrow, head of sustainability for IKEA UK said, the great thing about mycelium is it can be grown in a mold that will fit the product exactly. <laughs> You can then do bi-spoke packaging and it will decompose in your garden in a few weeks. Cool. Ecovation also sells the packaging to the computer company Dell and other companies that want to reduce waste. I mean, yes. Yeah, and I'm sure there's quite a few other companies out there. So uh, as we find them, we'll guys let you know because we want to support companies that are doing these kind of things. Now time for EV News of the Week. Workhorse has just announced their next delivery step van, the C650, which stands for 650 cubic feet of storage space. Yeah, they already produced the C1000, which is, of course, 1,000 cubic feet. Which is boil. A little bit bigger. Well, it's twice as big. Mm -hmm. They will be introducing it at the NTEA work truck show in Indianapolis on March 3rd. We don't know what N-T-E-A stands for, so search it yeah. out. Yeah, it'll be in the link below. Yeah. We'll have a link to it below. Mm -hmm. The 650 will come with either a 35 kilowatt battery for 100 miles or a 70 kilowatt battery for 150 mile range. So that's a gas equivalent of 53 miles to gallon. Now I've owned a step van and I know it don't get anywhere near that much. I mean, I, don't they get like, the ice ones get like 15 miles? If you're gallon? lucky, you get 15 miles a gallon. So big difference between 53 miles equivalent and 15 miles a gallon. Just think how much money you're gonna save. Wow. Since most of the in-town delivery trucks average less than 60 miles per day, these will be great for most urban usages. Cool. And it has a fully loaded weight of 12,500 pounds, so that's a pretty good payload. The trucks are made right here in the United States, in Ohio and Indiana. So, now, can us as civilians buy one of these vans? Yeah, I believe so. I think that they're going to be out there. I mean, I'm sure like the fleets, uh, they did state that I think FedEx and UPS are, will be buying some of them and there were some other ones. So check out their website. They'll have all the information on That's it. We'll have cool. a link below. So right down there. Right down there. Just hit your microphone. Anyways, so that means that now Amazon, UPS, and FedEx will all have electric delivery vans? Well, yeah, with Am with Amazon buying 100,000 of them from Ravion, the rest of these guys have better catch up because I mean, uh, it's going to cost a lot less money to, mm -hmm. to run around electric trucks than it is to burn gasoline. Yep. Okay. Also, another EV news. For those of you like us who really want that thing, the Cybertruck, well, we might be able to get our hands on one pretty darn soon. Well, you know, well, sort of. Yeah, sort of. Well, guess what, folks? Hot Wheels has announced they will be producing two RC model versions so, of the truck. You know what I'm going to call it? What? The MC. Yes. What? 
fun car. The fun car. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so they're gonna they're gonna make two models. They're gonna make one that's one to sixty four scale, and that one that's one to ten scale. So about that big. Yeah, so that one's gonna be pretty cool. Both models will have complete interiors down to the recycled paper dash. So mm -hmm. that cool dash is going to be part of the model. Yep. They're supposed to have a top that pops off and they're supposed to have a fully detailed interior. And I wonder if they're going to have that weird square steering wheel. What do you think? Probably. Maybe. Yeah. And I also wonder if by then they'll have the, um, you know, they'll have everything worked out to make it legalized. Well, so supposedly they, it's all ready to go. So, so here we go. So in theory... It could also have the um, side view mirrors and all that stuff. Yeah, we'll well. see. We'll see what they end up doing. Interesting. So the small one's supposed to have a 20 minute run time and the larger one will do 10 minutes. Hot because, Wheels. I mean, if you think about it, we have a little drone. It's, um, can't remember what the name is. It has a f three to five minute flight time yeah. and that like lasts a long time so if you're getting 10 to 20 minutes out of your rc car th th that's more than you're really going to be doing that's true so anyway hot wheels said that the real like the real tesla like mm -hmm. the real the cyber truck the 1 to 10 scale will be in limited supply so Aww. guess what we did we went and checked the website and yeah of course the first run of them was already sold out oh my so god. we'll let you know when they become available now oh my god you can go to the hot wheels website they're absolutely and, identical. Yeah, they're like absolutely they identical. Like they sold out immediately. Immediately. Oh, I just saw a stat yesterday, folks. I don't know if you guys have seen this out there, but uh, Cybertruck now has 500,000 pre-orders. Well, um... So that thing is, I mean, of course, how many are going to really buy one when it comes out? But there's a lot. So anyway, if you want one of these 1 to 10 scale Cybertrucks, which we are getting one. Yes. Well, uh, maybe. No, as soon as it comes out. <laughs> you can sign up to Hot Wheels... And then you, when they are ready to have more ready to order, they're going to send you an email and let you pre-order one. Mm -hmm. So the small one will be available in December of 2020 and cost $20. What about the big one? The big one's going to be $400, but it comes with everything. It comes with the controller, it comes with extra batteries, it comes with everything. And it looks just like the truck, right down to the wheels and the roll-up, the tonneau cover on the back and the tailgate with the uh, ramp so it's got everything there it's does got it lights a, on it um, does it have a um, little tiny mini no they're not gonna Damn have it. the little of the little they, the I, little four-wheeler that would be so cool if you literally could um like change the settings on your remote and then drive around the little four-wheel yeah, well, maybe they'll do that in the future. That would be anyway, <laughs> as soon as we find out when exactly they're coming out, we will definitely do an update on these. They're going to be really cool. In fact, we have plans. Uh, yeah. Um, so we're getting a DJI Mavic Mini. Mm -hmm. And which you're going to see. We're going to do in the video on. real soon. Yeah, we're going to do a review on. A couple of weeks, you'll see a video from that. Yeah. Um, but we're planning on installing our GoPro Hero 6 Black onto that thing. Yeah, in the back of the Cybertruck, we're gonna put a mount so we can put our camera back there and that's gonna be really great for running around and doing things like running around in our garden and stuff like that. So we'll get a bird's eye view or actually a rabbit's eye view of the garden. So that's gonna be and really you know cool. The, kind of the cool thing about that is um, like, it's gonna be this big. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, well, at one tenth scale, it's going to be whatever it is. Yeah. No, I, I saw a picture. It's like as wide as our table, which is about that yeah. wide, really yeah, wide. Well. So, doesn't that mean you could haul small stuff in it? Well, yeah, of like course. From place to place. It's going to be an RC car, just like all RC cars. So there's so, going to be some there's some things it'll do. We'll uh -huh. find out. I'm sure it'll have suspension and it's going oh, to have yeah. lights on it and everything, just like the real thing. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be pretty cool. And for like I said, it's going to be five years before we can get our Cybertruck, probably yeah. the way it's going. So anyhow, um, SpaceX news. SpaceX news. Work on Starship is progressing rapidly in Texas. Elon tweeted that Starship production and interactive improvements will be much faster than Falcon. Driving hard for a fully reusable orbital flight this year. Yeah, this year, folks, they're going to do it. So serial number one will be powered by six of the Raptor engines 
and they are looking for a high altitude suborbital flight within the next six months. So, so that'll be late summer is what we're guessing. And uh, I don't know, you check out what's going on down there. There's a lots of good sites that you can check out, but they mm -hmm. are building rapidly. They got a bunch of new equipment. And then one of the things that SpaceX did in the last couple of weeks is they hired more crew and they're now operating 24 hours D at the Boca Chica site. And plans for serial number three and four to have an orbital flight are by the end of the year. <laughs> so so suborbitable in six months, and then they'll fire up number two, which will also just go suborbital. But three and four by the end of the year are supposed to go up and orbit the planet. That's that's gonna be fun. And be 100% reusable. So uh, they're wow. rolling out the door there. So that's pretty cool. We're really pretty that's, happy about um, that. Pretty fun. Also, in other SpaceX news. SpaceX is about to do a launch that has not been done from Florida in 60 years. That's 6 zero. Yeah, 6 zero. Now, this is not the um, Falcon 9 launch with the crew. This is actually, they will be launching Argentinian SOCOM satellites into polar orbit. Now... What's polar orbit? Um, it's... It's a thing. So, polar orbit means instead of orbiting around the um, globe like this, you'll be orbiting around the globe like this around mm -hmm. the poles. Yep. Almost perpendicular to the more c common equatorial orbit. Yeah, apparently for some reason okay. they don't usually launch from the equator to go into polar orbits, but they figured out how to do it. And one of the cool things about this, which is one of the things I love to watch the most about these SpaceX launches, is they're going to be able to land stage one back at Kennedy on the pad. So that's going to be pretty cool. I always love watching to see that. So this launch is scheduled for March 30th, so we'll keep you informed as we get closer. And we'll hopefully be doing a live feed of that. Yeah, we might try a live feed that time. So anyway, that's our show for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe below and hit that like button because that really helps us. And then um, don't forget to click the notifications bell so you don't miss one of our awesome videos. Yeah, this is a huge help to us. And please share all of our videos with your friends and family. The links are listed below. Help us build a community of sustainable living families. Uh -huh. So um, now we have a little news for you guys. First thing is, um, if you guys were hoping for our news next week, sorry, not happening. Yeah, we're going to be, be at um, the Bricks Cascade Convention. Yep, which is a Lego convention here in mm -hmm. Portland. So we're going to probably be a little late getting our next show out. Yeah. Maybe Wednesday or Thursday of the, the following week. But uh, we will let you guys know. And so, we yeah. might do something live. We'll see. We'll see how it's going this week. Probably on the Lego channel. So yes. if you're not subscribed to that Lego channel, then go over and subscribe. Yeah, DCAC Brick and Brick. That's our Lego and, channel. And um, also, if you're in the area and you... Um, are interested and you want to come meet us um it's like twenty dollars a no. ticket no what's the ticket it's eleven dollars a ticket oh eleven dollars a ticket and if you buy four of them they're only ten dollars a ticket yeah so that's so it's good. Brisk, brisk cascades uh we're the, cascades um, com. lcmcs group so yeah come we're uh, gonna be uh yeah. yeah taking all of our big city down and our robots and everything else mm -hmm. so come down and check that out and make sure to comment down below of any questions or things you want us to do in the future and yeah see you wednesday for our um we're not gonna tell you you're just gonna have to watch we've got something good for you on wednesday you know i'll give you a tiny little hint it's up there someplace and they're kind of tiny all right, well, until then, be kind to each other in this little blue ball we call home. <laughs>